Well, as far back as I remember, there was always the case of uh, my needing this attention. Needing attention, I think, was one of the great first thing I can recognize now, you know, or, or looking back, they say that's what I was seeking. I was seeking this attention. Uh, and I think more specifically, I would think I was seeking attention from a mother rather than anybody else. I don't know if that was transferred in many areas, probably uh, over a period of time, and it has been transferred in many areas. But I think one of the things that uh, seemingly kept cropping up was said I was always trying to seek this attention uh, uh, by whatever means. You know, the thing of, uh, I didn't understand what was going on at the time it was going on, but yet still we said the most of these things in retrospect we say that we find out at another time uh, about what occurred uh, or how did I perceive things at the time when they were coming along. Uh, I grew up in a, a broken household at home, we could say, where the father was not present or the father did not early. Uh, when I was very young, you know, uh, my brother and I, you know, was kind of together with a mother that had support two kids uh, during hard times, uh, during the depression. And uh, I knew nothing about the depression, you know. Which, which I know about the depression. I know if there's a beans on the table and I, you know, and, uh, a roof over my head, you know, like who were you know. Uh, but I, I know during that period of time, I still, I seemed to get hurt or I was sick or, or, or quite a few occasions where uh, uh, mom would, you know, have to attend to my, my illnesses, you know. Uh, and, uh, and I kind of become dependent upon that, you know, and I think that... Uh, I was left with a number of babysitters that, you know, that seemed to me that it was attentive or non attentive but at any given time. And I might even say I probably, you know, as they looking back now, I said, uh, as far as my memory is going to serve me, you know, it would become a thing that uh, I wanted mom's attention. <laughs> you know, she said, uh, well, I want, I had a kind of need to have that closeness. And I can't remember being that close in terms of a mom, you know, on her own, you know, just saying uh, her baby boy, so to speak, you know. Uh, it seemed wasn't there. It just seemed to be elsewhere. At least that's what was my perception of what was going on. So, uh, you know, the it was a pretty consistent thing there, he said, and uh, then I had a half-sister that came along uh, four or five years later that uh, really did take my to, to take the focus off of me. You know, I was not the baby anymore, I wasn't the, the kid on the block anymore, and mom didn't have time for this baby anymore, you know, so I don't know if I got into any more illnesses or got sick or any other occasion, but it was always a case of uh, that's how I did get the attention that I, if I got it, that's how I got it, you know, get sick, get hurt, and I got some attention. And there was, uh, you know, seemingly, as I said, uh, that's how I kind of sought my attention at the time. I think I had, you know, enough fears, you know, in the process of uh, unfounded fears. Uh, I don't know, feeling of abandonment or anything of that nature. But, uh, I seem to be, you know, in, in many ways uh, pretty sharp in terms of you know, being able to learn or catch on to things. Uh, and so I didn't have much problems as far as initially in school even, you know, uh, I could adapt very easily, you know, it's called uh, what do you want, how you want it done, I can do it, you know, that kind of thing, you know. Uh, 
I had a tendency to do it my way. You know, it was kind of resistance. You tell me one way to do it, and I want to still do it my way. So I would run probably some conflict in that regard because it was always a case of the instructions were this is the way it's supposed to be done, and, and Bob would want to do it his way. And so Bob used to get his ass but considerably uh, when he got home because he wanted to do it his way, you know. Probably couldn't understand. It said uh, there was not no communications uh, now that I can understand it as to why I did things or didn't do things. Uh, uh, it was just called mom said don't do it that way, you know, or mom didn't give me no reasons for why not to do it that way. It was just called mom, that was mom's way, you know, and uh, that's the way it was done. You know. If you didn't do it mom's way, you're going to get your ass with it, you know, so. So I was seeing that I was pretty consistent, you know, I was going to get my ass shipped off consistently, you know. And so it was a case of, uh, you know, always, uh, when I think we moved, I think considerably in some ways, but it was, uh, it was always a case of living, from, I guess, from hand to mouth or, or living under those type of uh, conditions of poverty that uh, uh, when a family got larger, you had to find another room, and it was always a case of finding larger quarters to to take care of more kids, uh, to, to feed more mouths, uh, and it was always a case of seemingly not enough. So, uh, I think I shut down pretty early as far as how I felt and what was going on, but I, I probably didn't feel that nobody understood me or didn't care. You know, it was always a case of mom's rule. You know, uh, it wasn't the case of how you feel or what you're supposed to feel or what you're supposed to be doing. This is the way it's done and this is how you're supposed to feel and why aren't you feeling that way? And if I didn't feel that way or, or, or respond in a certain way, I seemed to be rock out of that field. So I, uh, I just, I probably shut down. You know, my reaction was to say, why, what's the use? Uh, and it wasn't particularly I was a bad kid as far as uh, neighborhood and so forth concerned. I got into a, a reasonable amount of, of difficulties with uh, uh, as a kid growing up, you know, doing, being at the wrong place at the wrong time, doing the wrong things, you know. So growing up was, you know, kind of like, I guess, a, a, just a kid's experience, but uh, it seemed I was never satisfied with whatever the condition was going on. I was never satisfied. I don't care what it was. It was my birthday, and I had all the presents. It was Christmas. I, it was still, uh, I didn't have the right things or enough things or whatever the case may be, and I still wasn't never satisfied. I wanted more or less or otherwise, you know. It was always the case of never being satisfied. I wanted different. I wanted to be different. I wanted to condition to be different. You know, one of the things, you know, that, that, that popped up for a lot of years was uh, uh, wanting pops in the house, wanting a father uh, figure, you know. Uh, uh, everybody around the neighborhood, most of them had fathers in the family, whether they were taking care of them, good or bad or otherwise, they were there, you know. And uh, we had uh, a stepfather who moved in sometime Oh, and probably mid-teens that uh, didn't, was not satisfactory of being uh, a surrogate father, so to speak. As far as I'm concerned, there was a lot of resentment that he was, once again, uh, taking my attention away, uh, demanding things that I didn't feel he had rights to demand. Uh, my father... Personally, you know, like, uh, I've seen him two or three times in a lifetime, and it was always a case of uh, just going to visit my aunt's house or something to see old dads, you know. But it was always this desire of wanting, thinking that if he was there, things would be different, they would be better, and they'd be okay, and da-da-da-da. And 
and you know, look at it today and say that might not be at all. Also, it could have made it worse, you know, because I didn't know him, didn't know why they why they broke up in the first place, and know nothing about the conditions of his living or his attitudes or nothing, you know. So uh, I only can surmise that you know, like if he were there, my old man were there, we would have took care of business, or things would have been different, or they. And we don't, I don't know, you know, but it was always that kind of a thing, like, in the back of my mind growing up that, you know, if Dad was there, you know, if Dad could be there, if he could take care, the conditions would have been different, and the things would have been better, and then, you know, and so, you know, the first thing I do, I put blame on moms, right? Uh, mom should have done something different. She should have done better. She doesn't have it, you know, just on and on. My head, you know, is usually talking about your head out to get to get you, you know, like you grew up with your, your with your your thoughts always somewhere else. No, not in the now. It was always somewhere else. And I'd be in school, you know, and my head would be out the window. You know, uh, just not would not be in what was going on in school, you know. Uh, and I learned one thing in, in the school processing, you know, that uh, once I got into doing some reading that I could escape in books. And I found that was a great escape, you know, I could get in books and, you know, and get into fantasy land and take trips, you know, in these here books, you know. Uh, so that became a kind of a, uh, uh, an out in a way, you know, just to get off in a book, you know take a trip, you know, I don't care what kind of book it was, funny book it would be, you know, me and Batman going on a trip, you know, me and Superman, Shazam, and what, and Captain Marvel, you know, I could go on a trip, I get in a book and just, you know, be somewhere else, you know, you totally absorbed it, you know, just submerged in that book, you know, and, you know, that was, you know, uh, kind of a, a learning process, I would say, if I could have probably applied it in, in a more useful manner, perhaps, uh, uh, it probably would have been more beneficial, you know, over a period of, of years, you know. But uh, that was one of my great escapes for a long, for a long time. You know, was folks. You know. So I, uh, you know. One of the things is, you know, I, you know, I didn't have too much problems in school. You know, I, I could get passing grades. You know, no great grades, but passing grades. You know, it's just enough to get by. I would do enough to get by, and it was not with very, with the least amount of effort. You know, not a whole lot of effort. It was involved in the process. You know, it was just a matter that it uh, <laughs> It's really, you know, it's kind of funny, you know, like you say, I realized today, you know, perhaps if I had applied myself, you know, to the subjects at hand and, and done all those types of things and said, uh, I probably could have made that some grades, you know, or I could have learned what was I was supposed to be learning, you know, because I use a lot of shortcuts. I use part of my shortcomings was shortcuts. Get to the destination of a shortcut. Why not use it? You know, all this in between shit is bullshit. You know, screw it. You know, uh, I'll find much many years later that you know, like, very often the stuff in the center is more important than the beginning and the end. You know, but well, that's where the substance is. You know. But if I could get by with this other shit, you know, like, that's all you're supposed to do is get by. Uh, but those are my kind of alert. You say, you know it, kind of knowing it now, and then you did not know it because it was, didn't concern you about uh, de dealing in those types of things. You know, all the types of things. Oh, get back. You know, uh, make it to the end of the road uh, by whatever means. Uh, uh, so you learn a lot of bad processing. You know, ideas or principles or philosophies, you know. And I think, you know, we were talking about the non-communication in the household uh, with no one, you know, in terms of how you feel, what's going on, and just life itself and life in general, you know. Uh, it wasn't something that was discussed, you know. 
and uh, and a lot of things that you learn how to do. You know, you learn how to lie, you learn how to cheat, you learn how to scheme. Uh, those are things that I, you know, I I found myself doing sometimes, probably for no reason, but thinking that that was the way to do it. You know, that's the way to do it. Uh, lie, cheat, scheme. Uh, and a lot of that was going on in the house too, you know, during the time, you know, like it was a case of Bill Fleck was coming, mom telling him, hey, go tell him that I'm not home. Tell him I'll pay him next week. So I gave him, him, hey, that's when you do it, you know. And uh, not just she could have done any different anyhow. Hmm? She just went to the door and told him and said, I ain't got the money. You know, but it was always the case of, uh, just tell them, you know, like, the money's in the mail, or, you know, or, or do it next week, or whatever the case may be. So you learn how to lie, and you learn, you know, like, little, uh, you know, like, if you can get away with, uh, go to the store, and you say, if they can get, if you can get, some way you can get a pound and a half rather than a pound for the same amount, you know, you take that, you know, you know it's cheating, you know, uh, because during the time of those particular time things were not packaged and most of the things was in bulk and there was no ways that you pull little cheats, you know, so you pull little cheats, you know. So you learn out of them little things, you know, these things. That's just maybe not acceptable, it wasn't but it wasn't saying it was unacceptable. So uh, and sometimes, you know, you felt that uh, telling a lie would uh, it just seems to be the thing to do, you know. It makes it sound when you especially when I was in the wrong, I used to build a lie. I could build a lie or I'd be on my way home about building a lie. By the time I got home, I'd have it down home down smooth, baby. You know, how it happened and how what the circumstances were, you know, and I have such a story put together that, you know, like uh, Maybe looking back on it today, I say it was too elaborate. You know, it was too letter perfect. No wonder that very often can be seen through. It was too letter perfect. You know, everything was fifty pieces. You know, how you just scheme. You know, like what was that? I was just too much of that. You have all the answers. You know, you just get the answers down pat. You know, so when they shoot one of that, you got one for them. You know. So, you know, I, you know, I probably, uh, in many ways, you know, with the case of uh, never feeling like I was enough in many respects to uh, put, uh, was afforded to the world around me. Not, probably not living up to my own expectations of who I am and what was supposed to be going on with me. Uh, thinking I should do better or be better or be in a better place or whatever the case is. And, uh, you know, uh, feeling in some ways probably that uh, I was capable of, of better things, but never seeming to, to be able to, to achieve or thinking it was worthwhile, uh, for what, you know, the kind of like attitude for what, you know, uh, uh, it's not appreciated, it's, uh, it won't do me no good, uh, Screw it. Uh, it's just kind of an attitude, you know, that went, went along with it. But along with that, uh, I think that, uh, you know, in some ways, you know, uh, I was not what you might call the bad kid. The fact is, in many ways, I probably was, to some degree, was a kind of a good kid in the neighborhood, you know, joined the Boy Scouts, you know, and get to be scout leader and get my troop together and to be playground counselor and take troops out to whatever and organize the shit, you know, and, uh, and do those types of things and, uh, and probably done quite well, you know. Uh, made friends fairly well with most, you know, most of the kids. Uh, I didn't have too many problems with the neighborhood kids, you know, we were pretty much lived pretty much kind of the same life and we had, you know, uh, kind of the same existence and, uh, and the majority of us kind of grew up in similar type 
抛手无收啊，啊，你 get along fairly well, you know,、uh, as far as making friends and、uh, being a friend with my partners and friends and neighbors. But always, I say, you know, it's kind of like the thing not feeling that there was enough, or there was something missing, or I want to be still not satisfied where I was, wanting to be somewhere, doing something. So when、uh, it came time for,、uh, not time for, I say World War Two, I think came about. And,、uh, It kind of was a lot of transitions took place, and a lot of us was thought about maybe we'll be going join the service, and a lot of us getting drafted or becoming of draft age. And,、uh, so most of my running partners and all that I went to school with and everything, we were right there at that cutoff age going to join the service, you know, and getting drafted or volunteering or whatever the case may be. And it served to be a purpose of, for me to、uh, join the service. I always wanted to run away from home. I used to have great fantasies about running away from home, but I never took it upon myself to run away because I had no place to run.、Uh, we were kind of an isolated family in a sense of speaking. My mother was not close with her relatives, and、uh, and for a while, from an early age, it said the father relatives were. Well, semi-close, you know. We used to go visit occasionally, but that was about it, you know. And,、uh, so I had no grandparents that were、uh, local that I could say run to grandma's house or grandpa's house, and、uh, no aunts and uncles available to run to none of their houses. So it was always a case of when I even contemplated running away, run away where, you know.、Uh, I guess there was something in me say that if you got to run away, you got to run to something. You know, have some place to run to. Just don't just get out of the street and go. You know,、uh, have something in purpose or way in mind to go to. And I never had that. You know that particular thing. So I was never foolish enough to just to say pack up my little thing on the poles on a stick on a,、uh, and get out and say get in the street. You know. We never got out of that, you know. Where I said I'm gonna run off that thing. But I would used to sit on the shit on many a thing, you know. After I got my ass whipped or or got some discipline of some kind, and, and contemplate, I got to get out of here. You know, a lot of that, I got to get out of here. You know?、uh, I don't know where I was going, but I had to get out of there. You know. So it seems that it was such an opportunity, you know. I, you know, I, you know, you spend some a few couple of years of of、uh, learning how to work in part time jobs and earn a little money and you know and all those kinds of things that you know that affords you a certain amount of freedom of activity. You know. So、uh, military, you know, became、uh, an option. You know,、uh, My running partner at the time, you know, like he, he was a draft aide, and I was a few months younger than him, so we both went out and volunteered. <coughs> so we went off to off to the army. Now, previous to that, you know, I had you know I had drank on a few occasions, but in the case there was no drinking in the house, and、uh, I didn't have a whole lot of contact or knowledge about what drinking was about. I used to see him stand on the corner, you know, and partying and those type of things. Occasionally go to team parties where they were drinking, but I didn't really have no great interest in drinking at the time.、Uh, a sip of wine or something, you know, and,、uh, and that was it. Because I had a lot of fear of moms. For one thing, I carried fears of mom for long. <coughs> What will she say? What will she do? How will she react?、Uh, She sometimes get very irrational in her anger, you know, and, uh, <coughs> and、uh, just go off on it. Yeah, you know. <laughs> just go off. So you know, I didn't try to carry nothing to disrupt the harmony of the house if I could help it, you know. 
So, uh, <coughs> the time the keys to get to go uh, to service, you know, was a time to I had become real man. You know, out of night, it was just one transition. It was just a matter of you join the service, you man. Right? And I knew about the whole process of growing up in that issue. I don't know about what responsibility a man is about, you know. Uh, you just arrive at a certain age and uh, you take on the man. And, uh, you do all the things men do. Especially if you're not under the watch why I'm nobody to tell you not to do it, you know. And, uh, and it seemed to be, you know, as I say, it seemed to be any cause. It seems how narrow my vision was in terms of things going on around me. I know everybody is in the military didn't drink or run the street and had, you know, chase hoes all night long and all that shit. But we always think is that everybody was doing because some people I ran with, we done. Hmm? So, <coughs> you say they have a, a whole platoon, you know, let's say uh, 70 some people in a platoon, uh, the first thing you think is everybody doing. No, it's just four or five of us run around together, and we used to do it. And uh, so, with always the case of of uh, looking for some excitement, you know, the case of uh, let's go out and have some fun. And the first thing to do is just get loaded. The first thing getting loaded on was uh, with alcohol. You know, alcohol seemed to be the fluid of the time. You know, like that's what you do. <coughs> At the end of the day, you get your nickel and dime together, and get your jug, and uh, see how many jugs you can get together so you can get your head bad so you can go out and have a good time. You know, just go out and just you know, get loud and boisterous and challenging, and you know, and just uh, you don't really feel your oats and and develop philosophies that you could not live by. You know. Derivatives you can buy our own account. And so I mixed and matched and put together, you know, and played all them things, you know, that uh, that's going to get you fucked up, you know, in, in the long run. And, uh, you know, that could be. Yeah. You know. And, uh, I need to stick a needle in my arm first. I start to move with this too. I spoke in the open room, start smoking hair on too, the same way. Uh, I heard it. Yeah. But uh, it was always the case of, uh, you know, big thing is that if you don't have nothing to use, and, uh, you get these here funny feelings uh, called with the road You know, and you don't know how to use them, you know, with you, you know, they're not talking about what girls and. And, and, and no long-term effects uh, or, uh, or drug addiction because they didn't know no more about an idea. You know, these were talking about, these were talking about, uh, this in the 40s. You know, uh, even in places they were studying. They, so you know the people in the street that knew nothing, very, very low about drug addiction. They know that you, you didn't have none, you got sick. <laughs> Direction of disease was or any of them. I just knew that one day I woke up and we had been shipped somewhere else in supply, uh, and I was sick of the dog. And I want to know what was wrong with me, you know. And I was hit up to them and say, hey, man, you see, what's that? You know. And he had proceeded to tell me about, uh, how to learn about the world of substitution. I learned that, you know, morphine is a hell of a damn substitute for her. For, you know, we're sick as well, you know. And uh, in the military, they had a lot of it, you know, packs around, you know, and so they they were short a lot of medical packs, you know, and uh, because we were talking about it, you know, so I'm learning how to use it. And I look at kind of one of these things, you know, like I thought through Korea, you know, uh, probably because I would say in many ways by being loaded. You know, I had, you know, partners and things getting shot up, blown up, and everything else. I felt guilty because I did, you know, I was loaded most of the time. You know, uh, 
I had to do, you know, to get by, get through, you know. It wasn't that I was running away from anything. It just seemed that I was never in, in, in the wrong place at the right time, <laughs> whatever the case may be, you know. But I got away, you know. Uh, but I still got away. So, I've, you know, cooked a number of habits in transit. You know, we move from one place to another, and usually put you on boats for long trips, you know. From, Places you're on the boats for two or three weeks, you know, and you have to kick a habit, or you get a chance to get miles in between, so where you even kick a habit till you get to where your next source of duty station. And there's a kind of funny thing, you know, that there are periods of time, uh, not no periods of time, a couple of periods. Of time, they didn't make whether it was legal or not. It was all time. The disease catch up with you where you, you know. No excuses, no escapes, and uh, everybody know you got a problem before you do. Those are the things that you're doing, and, and what's it was still pretty right, wasn't it? <coughs> Were we near the end? No, we can flip it out. Huh? I said we can flip it out. Oh yeah, I know, but I didn't. It hadn't got to the end, though. I think you see, look, look concerned like it had already got to the end and didn't come up with it. It wasn't going around when I looked at it. It was. Okay. That's real strange. And I got the feeling it wasn't going around and it was stopped. This you had a bad teeth. Oh, it's a cheap teeth. Oh, okay. Quite a fish. Before you Put go down. on, I was the ambassador, so we were talking about living overseas. You know, what, yeah, you know what I'm talking I about. Talking about yeah, I can yeah. identify it. Yeah. Know. It just kind of seems there are greater liberties to get off into a lot of little shit, you know, off in the back streets and rooms and houses and places that, uh, you know. No uh, laws. Yeah. Uh, it seemed those, you know, the local constabularies and things didn't fuck with people, you know, from a foreign country, so to speak, you know. Although, like in France and places like that, I've been on many raids where they they run in on places and check check all your identification papers and all that shit. You know. And I was always on the fringe, you know. It's kind of like on the fringe is a lot of shit, you know, underground shit, you know. And you turn that cool off a little bit, man. It's a little too cool. <coughs> Yeah, but, uh, you know, talking about growing up uh, under those conditions, you know, it's, uh, the disease progress was progressing because, I, you know, I was just talking about the activities and the things that I was involved in uh, kind of spoke to that, you know, that I didn't even understand that was going on, progression of disease. You know, I knew nothing about no progression. I just know that I was doing a lot more bizarre things to acquire the drug. Uh, I was taking greater risks. Uh, and I used to think, you know, at one time, you know, like, there's nothing to it. It's just like going to the store, you know. Just go out and get your shit, you know, and have some, and uh, go and get your day done, you know. Or whatever, you, you know, and just take them in. And then it gets to be more household. Or you find, uh, you know, find out uh, having to steal more shit or do more manipulations in order to get it. Uh, people being concerned that certain things weren't getting done, or they were being, uh, or they seemingly had you under kind of a watch, you know, checking it out what's going on. <coughs> and it gets down to a place where. As I said, the shit hits the fan where you find that uh, you just can't maintain. You know, where they say the connection gets too far away or apart. Uh, uh, many things start to occur. You know, the addiction reaches a place where uh, you don't give a damn what you got to do. You just call feed me. You know, and you have to go out there and feed me. You know, the monkey calling wants his food. Shit, man, you kick your ass out of bed and get you in the middle of the night. 
and send you off on one in journeys. You know, and I find myself running around in back streets and things, you know. And it's very conspicuous, you know, when when uh, got a place where you, if you're in uniform and you, you've got a military vehicle in here, there's places like Japan and you know, back streets and things, you run down the back streets and things, you become very suspect, you know. Uh, and people start <laughs> people start watching you. Know? <laughs> So, make a long story short, as short was, uh, uh, they was tagging up this year, Japanese girl, you know, that I'd been scoring a little from, you know, that I used to send her out to score it all the time. So they got her, but they busted her, and uh, they, who was this, this old dude, went out, went out to get the gym for you know, and all this shit. So they gave her 25 out and turned me in. By, you know, later, you know, nice, you know, it was set up, you know. So the mate was going, they brought me the stuff, and I uh, went on, took off, went back to the base and everything, and the CID is sitting there waiting. Dead and fit. Pocket full of dope. Very simple, you know. Uh, so. Needless to say, the results of that was, you know, like, you know, even in that insanity, you know, it was called restricted to quarters at first, and that didn't work, but I went, I was still running out <laughs> I had a whole access to a whole motor tool. I had a whole regimental motor pool I ran, you know. So I had vehicles. One of those things is, you know, not having vehicles, you know, I had vehicles I could go, you know. But, uh, so they had locked me up for real, you know. And it just, you got to put you on the lock and key. You're not going to do right, you know. Uh, but as I said, to make a long story short, after general court martial and the discharge and to the penitentiary and, and back to the streets, you know, like, uh, I will learn, you know, not how to be an addict, but when your environment changes, the things that you do changes along with it. You know, the way that you acquire your drugs, uh, uh, the games you play in the particular surroundings that you're, the playground that you have to play in. Uh, you learn how that game goes. You know. So I had to learn the street game, drug addiction street game. You know. It's a lot colder. It's a lot colder game. Mm-hmm. Uh, not that it's any different, it's just a colder game. It's very exacting in terms of what you got to do. So, what, you, what occurred here, you know, it was a case of uh, I would learn fast. You know, I'm a quick, I'm a quick learner. You know, I said, you know, you just, you know. I might stumble around for a few times, but I'm going to watch it and see what, how the game goes, you know, and I'm going to go quick learn on that. So I learned, you know, where one of the things was that uh, I needed somebody to take care of me. That was essential, you know, because I used what right from mama to military, you know, to jail, and uh, they took care of me. You know, they gave me three hots of a cotton, no responsibility, let me play crazy, you know, and... Uh, so I would learn that game, you know, come around and finish, you know, uh, <coughs> sit around and find somebody that's got something that uh, wanted to take care of you. I don't care where it comes, you know, who it is, you know, like, hey, you want to let me move it? All right, you know, shit. Uh, I might even have shared part of the first month's rent, you know, or the first meal or so. But that was only short lived because you know what the next move is, you know. Uh, I ain't got nothing. You know, ain't gonna have nothing. If you get a shooting partner, you ain't gonna. Both of you ain't gonna have nothing. So you figure out all hustles that you can come up with. You know. One of the big hustles I figured out on is said that we could be drug dealers is top of the line. Keep you well supplied. That's all you do. Have a source, a place to get it, and just sell drugs. You know. I thought that was it. I had a had a runner. Road I was going with, you know, like, uh, 
it's just all the other games were seemingly kind of halfway playing out, you know. I said, I said, I didn't send her. She went with a big connection and we come up with a fun big thing of your drugs and uh, you know, the business. You know, me being the best customer. And, uh, uh, very often, couldn't keep the money together because, you know, I said, yeah, I'm the best customer. She had fear sets in and, all the things, the cops and robbers, the game sets in. Uh, fear of all your people you got out there supposedly selling drugs for you, uh, or whether they're going to turn crazy on you, you know. And, uh, and you're afraid of everything. You know, fear just, you know, so you got to keep the kid in the So you spent a few years playing that, you know. I don't say a few years. It seems like seems like a few years, but it wasn't that long. Uh, those periods are usually short lived. You know, a couple, two or three months usually is a long run in those particular situations. You know. uh, then you finally you start going to jail, and uh, cause out here uh, in the case of uh, they used to just lock up drug addicts. You had marks on your shit. You know. I was always had marks. I thought I was using drugs. You know, <laughs> it was very simple. So <clears throat> after a number of successions of playing that little game, you know, like uh, take care of me and uh, and trying to do some dealing and learning how to steal game. You know, the, the burglary game goes and playing cops and robbers and. All kinds of little hustles and con games. And, uh, it just gets ratty. It really, I mean, it just gets, you know, rugged in terms of to maintain being an all right guy at it. Got it? Uh, a regular, you know, because you had to be, you know, you had, you had to, on the streets, you had to kind of represent that you was a regular and you weren't going to turn nobody in you wasn't going to rat on nobody you weren't going to play none of your funny games with one another you weren't going to burn nobody and you was a regular you know and uh, hold your butt and, you, and you've done certain things in order to be a reg you know so you hey, you just mean that you're an asshole that's all it means you know but you played the role well Played, you know, played the best I could, you know. And you try all the little hustles that you come to learn and to develop, you know. You learn how to receive stolen goods. You learn how to to uh, sell stolen goods. You learn how to do all those things, you know. And, uh, but all those things are illegal and they're going to get you in jail. Bottom line. So when you're thinking about them in terms of, uh, of what you can get away with, it's you know it's just an unending thing that you know you hate. You know you want to get. You hate. You, I don't care how much we. I don't know. I promised myself I'm going to quit this shit. I'm not going to jail. Uh, I'm not going to get loaded this time. I'm not going to. Hey, in real, but I'm going to go. It was almost a case when things got too shitty or rough. You know, I got prefer to be in jail, you know, than to be continued with some of the shit I had to go through in order to stay out there. So, just lock me up. Fuck it, you know. Uh, that wouldn't be what I'd be saying. I'd just be running harder. You know, like, damn, you know, be boogieing, David. <laughs> and uh, so I go to jail, you know. So in the process, you know, you, we find other little devious manners in order to try to maintain, you know, one of them was, uh, we use people, we use, you know, I used everybody that kept in contact with, they were primed to be used, I don't care how nice I want, seemed to be, or they seemed to be, they were going to get used if I was using them, some way, you know, uh, I used to show up at the house, you know, and talk real nice and be real nice and polite and all this other shit you know 
Don't turn your back, you know. Uh, don't uh, don't give me no slack, and don't give me an opening like you got some money, or got something else of value that I'm gonna run off with. Cause when you turn your back, I'm gone. You know, I'm gonna get you. Even to the point of the saying, and go deny it every time. You know, who lied to death? You know, but, uh, no, that wasn't me. Might have been somebody else. Even try to set it up and make it look like somebody. Yeah. You find you run out of places that you had, or places you can duck and dodge to, you know. But well, the process, you know, you're trying to find one that's going to be, you know, your hope car. Almost like going to mom's house, you know. You know how moms be the one, you know, if you run out of everybody up, go to mom's, you know. Mom would go for a sad story, right? Hard times, all the shit to go I couldn't run to mom because I had left home. And mom didn't have nothing to run home to in the first place. That's the reason I didn't go there in the first place. You know. So it ended up being you know, like, uh, I just need to find me a surrogate mom. So you find some unsuspecting or willing uh, participant in this year game of life called uh, moms. <laughs> yeah, mama? Yeah, okay. You want to take care of me? You want to help me out? Yes, great. Uh, let's do it. <laughs> uh, and uh, in the process, you know, you find some unsuspected woman, man, whoever is going to going to be the great rescuer. You're going to fix and make everything okay. Uh, addicts love. Huh? They rely on them. You know, not that we set out, not that I set out for that in, in that way in mind. Say, I'm going out here and find my mama to take care of me. Da, 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 da. We find them. You know, it's just almost like home in on it. You know, like I ran through a many relationship, but most of them were using relationships. We're going to help one another. We're going down the road to happy destiny together, you know, arm in arm, you know, going to jail usually, you know. Uh, and you, you find one somewhere along the way that, uh, that's more socially adjusted. That uh, will go for a sad story, you know. And, uh, so I married one. It wasn't my idea, it was hers. Yeah. <laughs> but it was very convenient because I was down to nothing. You know, when you run out, you tell me you run out of everything? Huh? I'd run out of everything. I'd run out of everything and, and just got out of jail. One more time. Hmm? And she said, You and me to the wheels run right here, yes, baby. You know, why not? Shit. Pay the bill, write the letter, whatever you got to do, you know, she let's do it again. You know. And uh, you drive him, you can't drive everybody around you crazy. You know, they stay close to you. They don't know what they don't know what's going on. You know. And I, I you know, it's kinda of hard to understand, you know, how much they don't understand what's going on. Even being an addict in a, in a relationship with another addict that was using. Knowing what's going on don't make it no easier. Hmm? And I've been in a few of those relationships. Huh? Uh, this was subsequent to after, you know, going to jail one more time, finding the DNA, because uh, she found it, and I she said, okay, it's a good idea, because she's always trying to take me, get me, you know, get my shit together. You know, she's always. So we visited many a place to get my shit together, you know, with her always her idea, you know. But, uh, what the heck, I ain't had nothing to lose, I ain't had nothing in here, you know, she didn't go for it. Yeah, she. So, <clears throat> what usually happened was a case of, uh, that's how, you know, I discovered what N.A. was, you know, N.A. was, there was some place that addicts went, you know. 
not that I was ready for it at the time. Uh, I went to peep in, looked around, didn't see my kind, didn't see nobody that I thought that I could uh, get identify with, you know, uh, hope to die, you know, because I didn't think they would. Uh, I thought they were a bunch of lames, you know. Uh, you know, I don't get that shit together. I just stayed out in the street and, and run her crazy. You know, in the process, you know, she went and got help for herself, you know, and she made a, made a move that made me make a move. It's called, you got to get your shit out of here. You have to go. Yeah. And, you know, it's, and, and, you know, when you ain't got no place to go, you know, if you ever had that feeling of not having a place to go, it's a kind of a desperate feeling, baby, you know? Huh? Uh, maybe at one time you might have had alternative places you said, oh shit, I wouldn't get around there, I'd go around there, you know. But you run on the places to go. You know, we, we burn bridges well, you know, we burn them motherfuckers down, baby, you know, scraps left, you know. The most places we could have went, we can't go. Because we were fucked up. You know, eventually we were fucked up, but at least I'd get out of the very place I'd had a haven for any given time, I thought you did. So, what usually happens, you know, I said, it becomes a case of running faster and going to jail more often because those seem to be the frequent places where we serve you the, uh, you know, three hots and a cot and you know, no responsibilities and, uh, and, you know, you get clean and uh, stay clean for X amount of days, months, years and, and come out and, uh, I never said about the idea of going to use again. It was always the idea of uh, just going to have a taste for old times. Or I hope I, it owes me one. Whatever owes you one. I don't know what that is, you know. But it's always a case of just a little taste for old times. You know. And I always ended up going back again, you know, for, for old times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But this thing here worries you out. I think it's kind of the thing that you say you get worn out of the revolving door and the same thing happening and seeming not getting any better. And uh, one of the things about uh, in April, say, what was that? Well, the case of uh, there were some directions that I heard. Uh, I may not respond to them because I didn't think they were sufficient or correct or proper. It was just kind of a thing that, like, okay, yeah, basically that's what works here. Uh, I don't believe it. But, uh, you get willing to try anything. You know, you get desperate, you want to try anything. Uh, I was not committed <laughs> any longer to saying that I was going to be a hope to die no thing, you know, because uh, it was very, it's not attractive. It will carry you to those depths that you know that uh, you're talking about bottoms, just below the bottom. Uh, we're talking about uh, you know sleeping in weird places, in weird positions, and doing weird things. They say that you don't even approve of yourself. You know, probably for you or nobody else around you, even as far as that concerned. Hmm? But those are the kind of things, you know, that uh, in our quiet moments, in the quiet moments is usually in a place of when we're locked down or in isolation of some type, all of a sudden we become very clear as to our plight or our predicament. Huh? And, uh, and we can't lie to ourselves about it. Huh? We have no excuses for what's happening. And yet, stop, really stop lying to yourself. Hmm? Uh, for some people, I, you know, I, I, I kind of, you know, I kind of ask the question and say, uh, "What is enough?" You know, uh, because I had to look at, hey, I had to look at myself in terms of what was enough. You know. And I think what was enough is that it, uh, it gets down to a place where, for many of us, it has to be a place of uh, almost dying before we get our really get our 
And I had almost died a couple of occasions in ODs and shit like that. And I had placed myself in very <coughs> precarious positions in terms of uh, I could have had died on a number of occasions on some keepers and shit like that. You know. Uh, but sometimes it's very, it becomes very clear that, hey, you're going to die. You're going to lose your life doing what you're doing. You know. Uh, and the sum total of what was happening in my life at the time was with nothing. Really nothing. You know. I'd lost all the havens to ride, hide in, and, uh, you know, you relegated to the street and sand to the, your best game. Best game become a snatch and grab game. And, uh, all the shitty, low life things you can pull or, or get away with. Uh, all that good shit, you know. And you know it's never bogus shit. You know, I'm mean, hey, say, what am I pretending? You know, you know it's bogus. And you just get to the place where you're disgusted with yourself. You know. And you think, you know, like, I'm insulted, you know, to the lowest of lows. And you're talking the drugs not cutting the feelings and the emotions and the things that are going on. It doesn't cut it off anymore. It doesn't shut it out. It's only momentarily, you know, like a quick nod and come out of it and you got to get up and run again. You know, party. It gets disgusting. You don't come out that nod, eh? and you ain't got enough to stay enough stuff to stay in the nod. Eh? You have to get out there and do it all over again. So short lived, you know, like an instant you enjoy and everything is at peace. And another half hour or two together you got to got to start skiing. Your head got to go into that mode called skiing. It goes on like turning up one of them timers, you know, like click 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 click. You know it's got to, hey, you better start moving now, you know. Mess around there and, and don't start moving now. You fuck around and, and, and wait till you get sick. It's gonna get slow down then, you know. And so you know, you know you got to eat, and it becomes unacceptable, you know, to you. It's not because somebody told you. It became unacceptable, you know. Like, wait a minute, yeah, no, 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 you know. Uh, almost to the point where you know death is imminent. You know, it's it, it's coming. Because of the things you're doing, the position you're putting yourself in, the risk you're taking. Uh, now I'm only talking about a daily basis. I mean, shit, just all, all the time. You know. And uh, I think, you know, that that kind of desperation sometimes will, I'll say, will, I guess, each person, you know, to his own, in terms of where that bottom is, they say, well, we'll reach out and, uh, and accept help as it is rendered, not as you specify for it to be. So it was always a case of me specifying as the help I want. Uh, I will only accept that kind of help. Uh, it came to the case of any help that's, really, that's tendered to me, I'm going to accept it. You know. I had, you know, I said I'd done some peep seeing in in in, in a and, uh, and they used to stay in touch, you know. And every time I locked up, they used to write me letters and come visit me and shit like that. <laughs> <coughs> but I had never, you know, done any things that they had suggested. You know, very simple. I had never done anything that was you know, full of shit. Man. But I was going to try just to see what was going to happen. And I think that's part of the thing is to say, uh, draw like the food puddings at the end, you know, to see what happens. And uh, in the process, you know, you get some attitude change going down. You see a little light, you know, just a little glimmer of light. Hey, maybe, you know, just maybe. I'm not giving a whole lot, you know, it's like, that's it. You know, just maybe. Uh, it can be different. Uh, it is a little bit different because I'm doing something different. I think it's a direct result of what I'm doing. Maybe I'm going to explore it just a little further. Becoming willing to try just a little further. 
because I think get to places say uh, you run out of your way, you know your way, you just ain't got you into just deeper and deeper shit. <laughs> you know, my way every time I look up, I was just digging my hole deeper and deeper. You know, every time I come up, I was going in deeper. And I had been to enough innate meetings that said all of the many of the things that they had told me had told me there were happening. You know? It became a thing to say, oh, shit, but they ain't lying. You know, they tell me what's, what's, what's really is happening, you know, and they would tell me exactly what was happening. So, uh, you know, I, you know, I got willing to, you know, do some of the things were suggested just for an exercise. I'll try it out. Uh, it was kind of like a temptuous trying out. I'll try it out just to show you it's not going to work. I'll prove it to you that it's not going to work. Not for me. It might work for you, but it won't work for me. And I'm going to do just what you told me to do, so I won't, you won't have no excuses to say that I didn't do it right. Right? But I think part of that process was uh, what happened to say that uh, some things usually happen. And it's most of anybody I know that tried it to the best of whatever their ability over the time it compared to nobody else's that something happened. And, uh, so, you know, I know that uh, there are some attitude changes that took place that I didn't, under didn't understand. I knew nothing about God, the spiritual principles, and those ideas because uh, I had shit can all that in my own time ago. You know, shit. I had no concept of God concept. I just kind of feel there was something out there that held it all together or, you know, took care of business, you know, but I had no, no particular God concept. You know. and spiritual and God was the same bag, you know, as far as I was concerned. Uh, I just missed church a long time ago. I had read most of the philosophies and, and religions of the world, and uh, they seemed to have nothing to offer me. You know, I know they talked a lot of double talk and, uh, and tongues, and they talked in parables, and they talked in a lot of things that I did not understand. So, just by the very process of doing some things, it's a very simple thing, you know. One, two, three, four, five, and the steps, you know, some things took place, you know. Like, like, wow. You know. Not that I understood what was taking place. Because I had no no idea about the God concept. I knew I was insane, you know, but this shit that I was doing was insane, you know. Rational people just didn't do that. You know. None that I knew, you know. Maybe somebody else, you know, but uh, but I had no real God kind of I gave it credit that there was one. You know, uh, by the very nature that I had survived a lot of crazy shit. That it was not my doing that saved me. Hmm? It was not my doing. So I could see one thing, you know, like there must be something out there, you know, that watching out over me, you know, somebody or something likes or taking care of me because I wasn't, you know, I was not taking care of me. But I was destroying me fast. And I gave myself all the right excuses to destroy me fast, you know. I'd done everything I needed to do. I'd been everywhere I needed to go. I'd seen everything I needed to see. I was it, you know. Life is that, what it is, you know. I had some some weird concepts as to what life was about. My philosophy for living was fucked up, you know. So, you know, uh, part of the journey has been, you know, uh, finding out about me and how I react to the world around me, you know. Uh, it's okay to feel things. You know, that was that was a hell of a hell of a relief, you know, that I can be emotional about something that's occurring. You know, I didn't have to be remove my feelings and emotions and put them somewhere else because you're not supposed to be involved on that level, you know. 
somewhere, as I said, I had a bad, uh, I had some bad teachers in that respect. I had no teachers in that respect. You know. They told me to give me a lot of bad information. For one thing, most of the places I've been, you know, the teachers gave me bad information. They, you're not supposed to feel this, or this is the way you're supposed to feel. Parents give everybody bad information. This is the way you're supposed to feel. That's not the way you're supposed to feel. I didn't know what I was supposed to feel. Yeah. People always tell me to grow up. You don't supposed to act like that. You know, I didn't know what to act like. You know, I'm feeling these feelings and acting these ways, and I didn't know what they have to do. You know, so I didn't think you were supposed to react and feel things. You know, so I used to you know shut them down. I knew exactly how to fix it. I fixed it, mother. I don't feel that. And, uh, you know, and all of a sudden, you know, that you get clean and say, and all these things start jumping up. Ooh, spooky. You know, wow. You know, I felt something then, you know. <laughs> you mean I'm supposed to feel that emotion? Wait a minute, you know. Yeah. Start feeling things for people and places and things, you know, like, wow, I don't like that. Huh? It, some of them were painful, you know. One felt good, and you never know, you know if that was what you're supposed to be feeling, you know. Uh, and, you know, you had some things that uh, started happening in your life. And, And you start some kind of reliance on this here power that you have been given. You know, they seem to have been given some power, you know. You get powers and you get power, you know, for the kind of thing. And all of a sudden you find out that uh, some things start working in your life that kind of proves you say there's you're on the right track or the direction is right, you know. You start feeling better, you start doing better. And, uh, and I think that's part of one of, the, one of the valuable things as far as I was concerned that I found that started happening, you know, like I started feeling better. My attitude got different. And it wasn't because somebody told me, it's because I, I recognized, you know, like, wow, well, that's not the way I used to act in that situation. <laughs> or that's not what I usually done in the past in that situation. You know, and I find I'm doing other things, you know. Uh, I don't think I'm a trick off I go out and help somebody do something. You know, I used to never hit I'm not going to call it that trick thing, you know. Are you helping somebody? No, no. The uh, above and beyond that, you know, on what that is, you know. But, uh, you know, this year growing up, you know, it gets to be, uh, it gets to be, I think, after time, it gets to be an adventure itself. Um, it's not frightening. It used to be very frightening. It used to be afraid of tomorrow. <laughs> oh, boy, I sure hope tomorrow don't get here. <laughs> Almost to that, in, that, in that respect, you know, like, oh, I don't face tomorrow. Uh, and, uh, I think after being around for a period of time, uh, it, it gets to the place of bring on tomorrow, baby. See, it's just another dimension. You know, another time and space that you have to deal with and say, uh, whatever it might be, it's okay. Uh, 